I have convinced myself that the hardest choices of my life were to go through a meticulous, precise, and deep analysis of options and consequences. And yet, I've come to realize that it is exactly this idea that complicates it all so much. Grown-ups have made me question and overthink my choices as I picture the worst thing that can happen scenario. And you know, decision-making would be so much easier if we changed that cliché to what's the best thing that could happen if the worst happens. Taking choices is taking chances, and doing so should not go through such a delicate and articulate process. My name is Mariel Soto Morales, I am a senior in high school in Mexico, and today I'd like to share with you the two pieces of advice that are my algorithm to easy choices. These are so effective to not be shared, and I guarantee that you have not heard them before, since they were created and given to me from my good friend Pau and my mother. Rule number one, two seconds of courage. Let me put it to you in the sentence my mother used to him for the first time. She said, Mariel, don't think about it. Do it. It takes two seconds of courage. Two seconds of courage and you go, knock it off. You are a bully and that is why you have no friends. Okay, now let me give you a little context. <laughs> so I was seven years old, returning home from school, and I hated school. I remember hiding my tears from my mom so that she wouldn't get worried, so that she wouldn't threaten me with writing an email to my teacher so that she could have a chat with my bully and publicly ask him to ask me for an apology, which by the way, happened more than once. I got bullied for my weight all through kindergarten, and since my father is genetically robust, my mom had already made peace with the fact that I would live my entire life as a big girl, and that I just had to deal with it. Bullying had made me this insecure little girl who was unable to think of a good comeback to defend herself. I would burst to tears every time someone called me fat, and I lived covering up my stomach. I went through neutrologists, psychologists, and workshops to help me out with my self-esteem. But nothing worked quite as well as two seconds of courage. So back to the story. I came home crying one of those days, and that day I was in the playground with my friends when the school bully stepped in my way just to go. Fat. And that was it. That was the insult. And it may seem very silly and childish, but at the time, that was enough to make me run to the bathroom and have lunch alone and crying. Again. So when I told my mom about it, she said, well, what did you say to him? And I said, nothing. And it was certainly not because I didn't want it to. It was just that I had so much in my head that I wanted to say and do that the moment just passed. And I feel like we've all been there. We've all felt that God feeling when we know something is not okay and we know we want to do something about it, but then we overthink and overthinking kills the moment and then the moment is gone forever. So my mom went, tomorrow you are going to go to this boy, you are going to look him in the eye and when he dares to say that you're fat, Mariel, don't think about it, do it. Two seconds of courage and you go. Knock it off. You are a bully and that is why you have no friends. Of course, I said that there was no way on earth that I was going to stand up like that to the boy every single preschooler feared. So my mom went. If you don't do it, I'll go to your school during lunchtime and I will tell him myself. So that was enough for me to agree to do it. And I did. So next day, I saw this boy in the other side of the cafeteria, and I have no idea what came over me, but I remember feeling like the main character for a moment and saying to my friends, I'll be right back. I have something to take care of. And then I stood up from the table dramatically and left with firm steps towards him. And I was not aware back then 
but I used the two second rule in there for the first time. So as I got closer to the boy and he looked at me, I started to panic and I decided to turn around. But when I did, my friends were watching me. And I mean, who wouldn't after such a dramatic exit? But at that point, if I went back, I was just a weirdo who would regret not standing up to this guy. And then if I kept going, there was a chance that I could bring back home to my mom some good racist news. So I kept going. And I was dying of fear. So I stood in front of the guy and he went. Fat. But this time I thought to myself, one, two, and I went, knock it off. You are a bully and that is why you have no friends. <laughs> and then from the bottom of my repressed seven-year-old soul, I went, and your mom is fat. <laughs> and you won't believe what happened. He was shocked. He was speechless because never in his life had somebody dared to reply to his offenses. And that is when I realized that everyone was watching the scene. Because I kind of yelled that his mom was fat louder than I expected to. So all eyes were on us. And then he ran away. He ran away. I made him run away. And I remember feeling like a superhero. So well, long story short, he never messed with me again, nor any other preschooler did. And I became this kind of kindergarten superstar that all of a sudden all wanted to be friends with. And of them two pieces of advice that I'll give to you today, this one is by far my favorite. And I want you to pay close attention because what I am going to say next may change your life the way it changed mine. We are teenagers. We want to fit in. And to do so, we think too much about our words, our actions, our choices, and pretty much everything we do. But life escapes your hands through thoughts and procrastination. Get this, hardest choices take two seconds of courage. And we may be very young and know little about life, but if there is something that we know perfectly, that's ourselves. We know ourselves perfectly. And we all know that feeling of that little worm that appears in our gut whenever we feel uncomfortable, when we feel threatened, when we know someone is lying straight to our face, when we are publicly shamed, when we have a, our finger on top of the send button and we're staring down at a long risky text before sending it. And it is so different from any other feeling and that makes it easy to be identified. So stop making excuses. Whenever you feel this warm, you know something is not okay and you know you want to do something about it. Do it. It takes two seconds of courage. So this is how it works. You take one second to inhale and curse if you need to. And then the next second to breathe out and do it. And I know it may seem as if it is easier said than done, but I promise it is so easy if you only focus on giving a tiny baby step. So ignore the big picture for a while and do something that will take you no longer than two other seconds to do. So just click send to that message. Say three words out loud. I don't agree. I'm uncomfortable. Wanna go out sometime? I was wrong. I'm sorry. I love you. Or raise your hand. Okay, great. Let's imagine you did that. Now what? Well, <laughs> the great thing about this two second rule is that once you use those two seconds of courage to get past whatever fear, call it rejection, shame, shyness, anxiety, since you already gave that first step and you now have people's attention, <laughs> it will ironically be worse for you if you just stood there quiet or sent no more texts. So you will have no other choice than to keep on going. There's no way back now. And it is amazing how two seconds of courage can change the path of your life and take you to the best moments of your life. This two second rule led me here. So think about it. If I hadn't stood up to the bully back then, 
The kids wouldn't want to automatically be friends with a shy girl. I wouldn't have golden social skills. I would still cry whenever I presented in front of an audience. And there would be no way on earth that I would be standing here voluntarily. See? So remember this. The worst regret does not come after having done something. It comes after realizing that you didn't dare to do it in the first place. So that was the two seconds of courage rule. Moving on to the next one. This one is an advice that my good friend Pau gave to me a while ago. And it goes, take the choice that gives you the most peace. Not the most amount of money, not the most attention, not the highest rate of approval or perhaps the most impressive curriculum, but the most peace. And it sounds so simple, right? And I feel like compared to the two seconds of courage rule, this advice can seem kind of dull at first, but hear me out. In my case, I am not particularly great at knowing what I want all the time. And it's okay, I know I'm not the only one. But this advice has been so helpful to me, and I am certain that it can be for you as well. If you're like me, we tend to get involved in a lot of stuff and say yes to a lot of stuff, sometimes way more than we can handle, to a point in when there is inevitably the need to choose and prioritize some things over others. But when the time comes to pick, you realize that in this, people are relying on you and that in that, people are relying on you too. So there is no way out in which you are not going to disappoint somebody. And it is at this point in which choosing becomes so, so hard. But that is when you listen to this advice and take the choice that gives you the most peace. This advice is extremely helpful. So whenever it comes to taking a choice or picking a path, the only one who has to be satisfied is you. Super, super, super cliche, I know. But at the end of the day, nobody cares for your dreams as much as you do. Nobody. Not your friends, family, partner, nobody. So take the choice that makes you the happiest, that gives you the most peace. Why? Because with time, a year, two at most, if they didn't agree at first, they will eventually forget. They will not care anymore. But the only person who may regret not trying to chase a dream, that's you. And those regrets, those <laughs> self disappointments, those won't take a year to heal. They will become a burden. Chains that drag you down for years and sometimes even for a lifetime. Is it worth it? No, it's not. Because nothing is good enough if it sacrifices your happiness. I strongly suggest that you use this tactic if you are struggling with picking between two or more options. Take the choice that gives you the most peace. Sometimes picking favorites is rough, but we need to acknowledge that some people, places and opportunities are meant to be just a couple of pages of a chapter and not our whole story. Life is full of surprises and no one really knows what they're doing. So enjoy it, learn, but most importantly, have no regrets. Thank you very much.